Okay, I want to call on this gentleman right here. Thank you. My name is Hitesh and I'm a Fulbright scholar here in the United States. Uh, of course, I haven't read the book, but my observations are based on the presentation made by Christine. Uh, unfortunately, I found some of the, uh, there is a lot to debate about, but I understand I am a participant only, I can make only use of limited time. I found some of the, uh, some of the arguments were very selectively used and only one side of the picture was presented. For example, a couple of examples. Uh, you said, Kashmir, Pakistan has no legal, legal basis uh, on, on Kashmir. I don't understand what sort of legal basis should we have. You have mentioned about the UN resolution. You have mentioned that India went to uh, a Security Council, and Security Council said that let's the, let the Kashmiris decide. Uh, let let me let us have a plebiscite there. So that's a legal basis. Go and ask the Kashmiris with whom they want to go. Uh, my second observation: uh, Yes, we had a beautiful lawn back there in our uh, in our homeland, but it was. Uh, late 1970s, at the peak of Cold War, Soviet Union just entered Afghanistan, and here was the CIA and the Americans. They uh, went uh, to Pakistan and Afghanistan, and fortunately, incidentally, they found an ally in the form of ISI or whatever, and they jointly created this jihad narrative. Kashmir was, is not the only thing which is behind those groups which you, you are calling the jihadists and terrorists. In fact, Kashmir has always been there. The jihadis, the rise of jihadis has been after the uh, Soviet Union entered and then CIA went there and IS worked with ISC and the jihad narrative was brought, groups were made and fought with, and then the Soviets were pushed out. Soviets were pushed out and then US left uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan in the lurch and Afghanistan fell into the hands of the warlords. All right, so, so you need to read my book because every single thing that you just said is fictional. Let's first begin with the UN Security Council Resolution 48. Sir, have you read it? Have you read? No. Okay. So you fir the first thing I'm going to encourage you to do is go on to the UN Security Council's website and read that fabulous resolution that every Pakistani points to, but which not a single one has read. I also then want you to take the actual version from the UN Security Council, and then I want you to compare that to the claims made by Pakistan's permanent representation to the UN. And you're going to understand your confusion, sir. So the resolution is actually very clear. There are three steps. They were sequential and they were conditional. The very first step was that Pakistan was supposed to demilitarize to the satisfaction of this UN body that was to be established. Then, conditional upon the UN being so satisfied with this demilitarization, India was also supposed to demilitarize with a presence being permitted to defend itself against Pakistani aggression. The third, having both of those two steps taken place to the satisfaction in sequence to this preferences of the UN, then the plebiscite would be held. So all those Pakistanis that are so upset about the plebiscite that never happened, they have their own government to blame because Pakistan never fulfilled the first necessary but insufficient condition. So I'm going to encourage you to actually read that before you ever make such a fool of yourself again by presenting it in public, right? So just do yourself a favor by reading the darn thing. Second, I want you to also learn a little bit about your country's Afghanistan policy. Sir, do you know that it was Zulfikar Ali Bhutto that began the ISI cell in Afghanistan? That in fact it was Zulfikar Ali Bhutto who began setting up what became the Seven Donkeys before the Soviet Union even crossed the Amu Darya. Did you know this, sir? No, 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 I want you to answer my question. Did you know this, sir? No. Okay, so this idea that somehow the United States used Pakistan in some sort of anti, you know, uh, some sort of effort to dispel the, the Soviets is completely an incorrect reading of your own history. Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, after King Zahir Shah was ousted and Dowd came to power and began um, implementing pro-Soviet policies, driving the Islamists into Iran and Pakistan respectively, Zulfikar set up an ISI cell so that he could then use those disenchanted, disenfranchised Islamists to become vectors of Pakistan's policy in Afghanistan. 
Did you know that we first sanctioned Pakistan in April of 1979 because of advances made in its nuclear weapons program? If we were so interested in sucking them into our evil jihad designs, we sure did make that difficult for ourselves. Because when the Soviets did finally cross in, we actually had to, to do a bunch of maneuvering to get a waiver. And did you know that the first monies did not go into Pakistan until 1982 because of that uh, requirement to get a waiver? So before you go and, and you blame the United States for using and abusing poor Pakistan, you should familiarize yourself with your own history. Because in fact, Pakistan had been instrumentalizing Islamists long before the Americans even knew what an Islamist was. Now, going to your next point about the Americans just leaving Pakistan high and dry. Well, this comes to, now Steve Cohen is here. I'd like to hear him talk about this. Let's talk about the Pressler Amendment, right? The Pressler Amendment was actually designed so that Pakistan could continue proliferating while we continued arming you. Right? Because we'd first sanctioned you in April 79. Everyone understood the name of this game. When we withdrew in 1990, we withdrew. Pakistan, however, continued mucking around with the Islamists. So this idea that the jihad today are the, are the Taliban of today and al-Qaeda, this is also a really grotesque and, and, and empirical error that I don't quite frankly expect from a Fulbright student. So I'm happy to have more exchanges with you, but I think you should read my book because everything that you said is a highly stylized retelling that you get from Pakistani media in your curriculum.